Good evening and welcome to The Envelope, Please. Have your champagne glasses ready because we've got something to celebrate in this seventh year of On Plenary Texas. Tonight, our juror, Sarah Linda Poli, will reveal her selections for 30 of the competition artists who will come to San Angelo this October to paint on plein air. That's the French term for painting out in the open air. Now here in Texas, we pretty much say in the plain air. And some of those artists who have painted here in past years in our plain air say there is endless inspiration here with our rivers, our historic city, the International Water Lily Garden, and of course, those fabulous, authentic West Texas ranches. I'm Barbara Rollo, coordinator of On Plein Air Texas, and in a moment you'll hear from my good friend and co-chair, Treva Boyd. And we're about as excited tonight on this video as if we were all together in person. And speaking of that, we've got a photo from last year's Black Tie Affair, and the center of attention at that table is our Grand Dom of On Plein Air, Texas. Elta Joyce McAfee has supported this event from the start and has established an endowment so that On Plein Air, Texas can continue for always. The grand prize is named for her and we are grateful for her exuberant support. Now I can't wait to hear who this year's new artists are, but first, Treva is going to introduce last year's top winners. Treva? Howdy, I'm Treva Boyd, co-chair of On Plain Air, Texas. Welcome to this evening's exciting event. Each year, the top four prize winners from the previous year receive invitations to compete in the current year's event. Our juror has the task of filling the 30 other spots from the artist applications we've received through May the 15th. We'd like to introduce you to those four On Plain Air Texas celebrity artists before we announce our new ones. All of these artists have not only won awards other years here in On Plain Air Texas, but they consistently win awards all over the country as well. Hugh Lai Chong was the Elta Joyce Murphy's grand prize winner in 2019 with this stunning painting at Eggemeyer's in downtown San Angelo. This painting is representing On Plain Air, Texas and San Angelo in national magazine ads across the country all this year. Hugh Lai has participated in six of the seven On Plain Air, Texas events and won numerous awards over the years. Chong Huang of Cedar Park, Texas was the Artist Choice Award winner last year and has a few words for us tonight. Hello everybody. Uh, this is Chang Wang. Uh, I am the artist and participate in the uh, Plein Air Texas competition. Uh, this will be my third time going back to San Angelo this October. You will experience a lot of wonderful things from the West uh, Texas and the cowboy culture. There's so many wonderful things to paint. Uh, in San Angelo area, you will see big, uh, large, vast, wild ranches and horses, and uh, also historical downtown area has lots of wonderful old buildings. It's beautiful Concho River and wonderful fine art museums there. And San Angelo also have a, a great international water lily garden and also you will enjoy the excitement of the rodeo and the roping competition. I'm looking forward to meet so many uh, wonderful artists coming to San Angelo the first time and also looking forward to seeing some old friends coming back. We will have a wonderful time again. Thank you. Thomas Jefferson Kitts was a 2019 second place award winner Thomas will join us for his third straight year at On Plain Air, Texas, and he is here with a few thoughts. Hello, my name is Thomas Jefferson Kitts. I want to begin by thanking you all for inviting me back to this year's On Plain Air, Texas. Many of you know that I love to travel and paint. I love traveling in the U.S., of course, but I also travel worldwide. I travel because the things I experience brings me new subjects and people into my life. 
for the past few years I have come back to San Angelo. I think it is because San Angelo is an authentic kind of America, or certainly an important aspect of what America is. The hospitality and generosity I experience speaks volumes to who you are. I was honored last year for my painting of two 500-year-old live oak trees. The painting was titled Aged to Perfection, and to me those trees expressed a fundamental truth, that the longer you stay in a place, the more you become a part of that place. 500 years is a long time. Within it, Columbus crossed the ocean. Spaniards came and settled. Then, so did other Europeans. 244 years ago, the Great American Experiment was launched. And despite the occasional fit and start, then and now, the American Experiment continues. There is something about West Texas I find refreshing. An optimistic, can-do, and make it work approach to living one's life. I am from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, actually, so we share that in common. San Angelo may be a different place than where I live, with different people and a different landscape, but our common hospitality and the generosity we share is our bond. Again, thank you for inviting me back. I look forward to meet, meeting more of you and painting in your world again. And as I paint, I hope to discover new ways to express that connection, both to the land itself and to each other. Stay healthy, stay safe, and God bless. Zufar Bikbov was the 2019 third place award winner with his painting of our iconic Twin Mountains. This is also Zufar's third year to paint in On Plain Air, Texas. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, I'm Zufar Bigbov. I am one of the uh, top prize winners of 2019 in Plain Air, Texas. And of course, I'm looking forward to meet other 30 artists. Many of them I probably know, and some of them will be new faces for me, uh, who are applying and will be selected uh, by a jury for 2020. Uh, this year, for many means, uh, is unique for good and bad reasons, but I'm glad that uh, Plein Air Texas will be held as usually. And even though uh, the area of western Texas seems to be dry. Uh, in that area three amazing rivers start and um, you can find their places to paint pastures and uh, several year old, uh, several hundred years old uh, oaks, like a lot of different things, in amazing interesting buildings. Um, but for me most favorite uh, place and unlimited inspiration site is ahead of the river ranch. That's my uh, favorite one and I'm planning to visit it. So I hope to meet you or see you this year uh, again in Texas in October. The bar is set high, as you can see. Barbara, tell us a little bit more about how the application process works for the rest of the artists. Thanks, Treva, and congratulations to the four, top four winners from 2019. So how does all this work? Well, every year artists are invited to apply from around the world. It's an international competition. They apply by sending us three JPEGs of their plein air painting work and pay a small fee. Actually, we had artists from four continents and 26 states apply this year for On Plein Air Texas. So then we are looking for a juror every year and we want someone who's highly regarded in the art world. And we charge them with selecting those artists who will be coming to San Angelo that fall. Most of our jurors are artists or they're very connected to the arts. They have an esteemed reputation in the plein air world. As a painter or a teacher, they will have received accolades and awards for work in their field. We are looking for someone with integrity, someone who will be objective, fair, and who will take very seriously that task of selecting just 30 artists from the hundreds of paintings that are submitted. Tonight, I'm honored to introduce you to this year's juror, Sarah Linda Poli, 
from Easton, Maryland. Sarah is a well-known teacher and an award-winning artist best known for her paintings depicting dramatic lighting and skies. I'm honored to introduce you to Sarah and we'll let her tell you about her plein air life journey. Sarah? Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'd like to thank all those wonderful folks that are involved in making On Plain Air Texas possible. This is a really excellent event. I'm especially happy that they asked me to be the juror. Uh, very honored to do that and excited to tell you who the participants are. However, I have to say that this is not an easy task. It's quite arduous, actually. Uh, there was no way to fit all the artists that I wanted to put in into the slots that I had. We do have an alternate list that's quite long. <laughs> so um, I did my best, um, but I had to make some painful decisions. So what I wanna do is, before I get started with anything else, is I wanna make a toast to every artist that entered this competition. And you're all just such a wonderful bunch of people and just fabulous artists and I salute you. Cheers. Yoo-hoo, okay. So, a little about me. So I've been painting most of my adult life that I can remember and probably as a kid because I got those sets of paint by numbers that I just absolutely adored. So maybe that's where it started. Back in the 90s, all the way through the 90s, for 10 years, I worked at a gallery as, as the gallery assistant. And my job was there to go around with the judges who by actually came once a month because we had a jury show almost every month of the year. And so, I would go around with the judge and I would listen to his comments or her comments. I would write them down often and just really absorb what these people were saying. And they were very diverse, very interesting group of people. So you can imagine. I learned like so much from that, just from that one thing. Um, I was introduced to plein air painting when I joined the Washington Society of Landscape Painters, which I'm still now a member, and that was over 20 years ago. That club is over 100 years old, and the members from the very beginning have gone out together and painted together outdoors. They called it, I believe, outdoor painting, and I don't think they called it plein air painting, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I must admit, that I became obsessed with plein air painting. Being outside was something I always lo I already love, being in nature and then be painting at the same time, that's like double heaven. Uh, I worked hard for a couple, two, three years on learning it, even though it was very difficult when I started it, I thought I'd never be able to do it, it was so hard. <laughs> and you just kept it up. And, and then finally, um, I started teaching and that really helped a lot because you always, you deepen your own knowledge whenever you teach something. So that was wonderful and it still is and I'm still teaching. And that was when I decided I would start trying to be a participant in some of the plein air events that were happening. They were not nearly as many of them as there is today. And they were mostly out west as far as I can remember. At least that's where I did most of them. Um, one of the go-to ones was in Carmel, California, and everyone wanted to do that one because that was kind of the hot one at the time. So that is the one that was used for a model for Plain Air Easton and many of the other ones. So Plain Air Easton is something that I've been involved in for many years. Uh, since its inception, and I've done almost every year, not all of them, but most of them. I've met so many wonderful people, so many wonderful artists. It's just amazing to me. Anyway, I don't do plein air events much anymore, but I still do Easton because I live there in Easton, Maryland, and it's my community, so I feel attached to it. 
But otherwise, I'm really not doing plein air events. Um, I work a lot in the studio and I'm doing a lot of experimentation. I have five galleries that I'm feeding um, and I'm te still teaching and occasional jurying or judging. It was at Plein Air Easton that I met Barbara and Joe. And I, um, it was love at first sight, I think, with them. Just such great people. And as they told me, and we talked about what they were doing and their vision for On Plain Air, Texas, um, I, I was just really interested in what they were doing. And I feel that I have to say that their, their events come from a really deep dedication, uh, a very a professionalism and a very large sense of integrity. Um, and of course, it also comes from their love of the arts and the artists themselves. When I'm, uh, when I'm jurying or judging, what I look for is these things. I look for, at drawing, design, composition, color, and that means the use of color, not just the colors they use, but the way they use it, handling of edges, and the paint quality, which is the application of the paint, which can mean also mean a lot. I also look for a story or an idea that is unique or compelling or shows a particular vision. So that I think feel, I feel that has to come into it too. So, okay, without further ado, it is with much joy that I introduce the names of the fabulous artists that I've chosen. The Envelope Please. Okay, the envelope. All right, uh, these aren't in any particular order and please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Antoine Lemieux Ramar from Orlando, Florida. And the first one, the, the slide, these, each one is one of the images that the, uh, out of the three that the artist sent. And I'm just saying a few words about each one, why, what I thought, what I liked about it. Um, the sweep of this one uh, with the lights, the way he's arranged them going up the staircase toward the figure and then the archway at the top. And it just brings your eye around so nicely. And also there's a really nice harmony of color in that one. Very nice. Next one is Bill Farnsworth from Venice, Florida. And in this one, I really like the way he handled the light in it especially that raking light across the path. I think it's a difficult thing to get that raking light right. And he's really done it. And I also love that he put that little telephone pole way in the background. Um, it kind of just shows you where the, path, where the path is, even though the path isn't there. I mean, it, he didn't put it in, but. So I really like that. It's just very nice. So it's beautiful sense of distance. And the next one is Charlie Hunter from Bellows Falls, Vermont. And in Charlie's, he's just got a very strong composition. And it's like a no-tan, if you know what a no-tan is. Um, it's a dark and light. And he's just, it's just very strong. He's got some radiating lines coming out from the subject that I really like that you might not be able to see unless you look closely. He's um, intimated these, this pattern and they all come into that focal point, which is that beautiful vertical that's sitting there with the little, with the light right in the, in the background light part. Anyway, really very strong um, design there. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, the next one is um, Deborah Hughes from Costa Mesa, California. And Deborah's, I love the way she's, Though she has one big shape, within the big shape, she's got lots of small shapes. And each one of those small shapes are a gem. And they all connect so nicely to make that, that row of laundry. And then underneath it, 
she's got the the um, the shadow actually really supports that. I thought that was just really nicely done. Thank you, Deborah. And the next one is Jason Sakran from Fort Smith, Arkansas. And this is a beautiful arrangement of shapes. And I guess that's what a lot of it is about, arrangements of shapes. And this is really a good one. Uh, beautiful design and with the support of the, the backlighting and that soft light beyond it, uh, and the way that it's lit just enhances the whole thing. It's really an excellent design composition. Thank you to Jason. Uh, the next one is Christine Lashley from Reston, Virginia. And Christine's is, um, she's used one of my favorite things where the use of triangles, that road becomes a giant triangle that goes up and draws you way back in. Also, her the way she's arranged the lights, the, the most lights are in the background, so that pulls your eye into that place, but she's got, the way she's arranged everything else around there really works to pull that in and not make it too important, perfect, with that little skyline. So I think that's um, a beautiful composition, beautiful color, all in all around, really strong painting. Thank you, Christine. Okay, the next name is Mark Shasha from Wamscott, Massachusetts. And I love the, um, well, he's got very nice shapes, but they're very subtle. And sometimes I would say that the old phrase, less is more in this painting really applies. It's got a beautiful sense of atmosphere and, but also tells a, a nice story. It's a really well executed painting. Thank you, Mark. And our next name is Lon Brower from Granite City, Granite City, Illinois. And I, I love this painting. Um, it's so strong. It's such a beautiful design and beautifully rendered with the light, the way the light is on it and the colors, it's just a joyous painting, really. It's just joyous and so fresh. So thank you, Lon. The next one is Sherry Thomas from Larson, Wisconsin. And in Sherry's, this is a very, another very subtle, but very lovely painting that where she's, she, the composition where she's um, got the shapes of the large mass of trees and the smaller one, and then the um, distance factor is, is just very nice. And the, um, the color is also very harmonious. So it's a very pleasing painting to pulls you right into it. So thank you, Sherry. The next one is Susan Lim from Rockport, Massachusetts. This is this is what I call a beautiful watercolor. <laughs> uh, beautiful handling of that medium. Um, I love the diagonal, the way she's she's used that and also part of it pulls you back. And she's got the, that distant mountain is really expertly done. Um, it's a very strong painting um, and very subtle, but very strong. Thank you, Susan. Next one is Neil Hughes from Medford, New Jersey. And in this one, this is such a lovely painting. It's the paint quality in it is just gorgeous. And he's got the he's got the um, the focal point kind of low in it and it was maybe not exactly where you would think of it, but he knows because he, he's good at this, he knows how to balance that with all the water that is on the other side of the painting. It, it's just, um, that takes a talent to do that. And his colors are just so soft and believable and beautiful. Um, 
anyway, and I, just the whole thing is nicely organized. So great, Neil, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see, the next one is Michael Thomas Orwick from Beaverton, Oregon. And this is, this is a lovely, um, being a cloud person myself, I have to appreciate the, the, the organization of his clouds and the composition, um, the way he's brought them around so that you go around the whole piece um, and the sense of distance and the color, it's just really well organized and very well done. So thank you, Michael. Next name is Spencer Meager from Mount Vernon, Illinois. And this is such a very strong painting also. Beautifully drawn. I love the way the light comes in and hits just parts of it. it, it it's not overdone, but it just shows you the shape of everything. It's really nicely done. And also the colors are really nice. Just very harmonious and nice. Anyway, thank you, Spencer. Nice job. Uh, the next name is Kathleen Hudson, and she is from Lexington, Kentucky. And this, this is an interesting piece to me. I really liked it a lot, the way it has an emotion about it. For maybe, I don't know if it's just for me or for her. I love, of course, the way, obviously, it pulls you back in. It does have a reward back there. Um, the mountains and the clouds and the sky are kind of a reward at the end of the trail. But also she's done some really nice brush or knife work on the actual path in the beginning of it. And it's wide in the, the front, so it's, um, it's just nicely imagined. Really well done. Thank you, Kathleen. The next person is Catherine Hillis from Round Hill, Virginia. And in this one, this is a what oh by the way i had to choose quite a few what there were so many good watercolors i had to choose quite a few um i've never seen this many fantastic watercolors in in one um jurying process so this is one of many um she is a very competent drawing i love the way she's shown the foreground middle ground and background She's involved you in this piece and pulls you into the room and what's behind it. Also, your eye goes all the way around. Um, it's just really well organized, nicely composed, really nice job. Thank you, Catherine. Next one is Deborah Howard from Ladies Island, South Carolina. And this is a charming piece, I think. At, but one of the things that are really strong about it is all the different shapes she's got and all the different colors that just take you everywhere in that piece, but yet in a really cohesive way. Um, her paint application is really good. Her color harmony is good. And she's got a certain pattern to it that makes it just really interesting. So once you get in there, you don't wanna leave. That's the way I felt. So thank you, Deborah. Um, next one is Nancy Tankersley from Easton, Maryland. And, Na and Nancy's painting is a beautiful, she's done a beautiful job of organizing the pieces that are in this. Um, she's taken a complicated subject and made it so that you can really appreciate it um, the house is subtle, but beautifully done. Also, the paint application in this is really nice. It's, I think that she's used brushes and knives, and she has just made it very interesting um, with that application. So thank you, Nancy. Beautiful job. Okay, and the next one we have is Lori Murfield Batson from West Cliff, Colorado. And in this one, I I was very drawn into this piece and liked it right away. I liked her paint quality in this is quite entertaining. Um, her 
the way she has those two rocks in the middle, but she really pulled it off. She really pulled off a very interesting and very well organized painting. Um, and the colors are really nice, but the paint quality is super. Anyway, thank you, Lori. And the next one is Hio Hal from Stevensville, Maryland. And in Hayo's piece is very imaginative and a bit narrative, I would say. She's got a lot going on in this piece. She's in the foreground behind a window with the, the lighthouse in the background. What You would say, what is the focal point in this? Um, if it is, in fact, the lighthouse, which I think it is, she, she pulls you back and there's that one light. It's just a really good way to pull you back. But she's also got that little tag in the foreground, which was her tag for the event she was doing. So I think, I think that she put a lot of thought in the organization of this painting. It's very successful. And also the window itself adds to the whole thing. I mean, it wouldn't work without that. So, Hayo, thank you. Excellent job. The next person is Debbie Carroll from San Angelo, Texas. Yay! <laughs> and um, this is very, she's got very strong shapes in this um, and, and very nice color. And uh, she's just done a, a very nice job of it. Thank you, Debbie. Um, the next person is Jill Basham from Trap, Maryland. And in Jill's painting, this is again, another, I would agree, kind of like a no tan that where she's really got the dark and light composition, but I think it's very strong. She's got kind of a strong uh, vertical in there too with the tree. So your eye tends to go all the way around it and then get pulled back into the hole where there's a distance uh, and, and there's a shore back there so you can see what's happening. So I, and, and her color is very, very subtle, but it really works in this piece very nicely. So thank you, Jill. Nice job. And the next one is Richard Sneary from Kansas City, Missouri. By the way, I was born in Missouri. <laughs> um, this is just an excellent painting. Um, it, it's got, the composition is great. Um, the design is great, the colors are beautiful, harmonious, and it's kind of narrative. It's just an all-around, um, really well-done painting, and another watercolor. I didn't mention all of them, but I'll tell you, they're really good. Um, thank you, Richard. And the next is Brianne Brown. And in her painting, it, this is also a little narrative too. It's got a figure walking in it. So it has a bit of um, movement in it, which uh, so all paintings don't have that. And I always appreciate that when they have like a moving figure. The drawing is really well done in this. But there, I like the use of light too, the way she's lit and has that dark shadow coming in. She's really made it work quite nicely. Um, it's beautifully rendered. You have to look at it closely to see all the the beautiful detail in it, but um, it's really nice. Thank you, Brianne. And the next one is Tim Bell from St. Michael's, Maryland. And this is just an, an exceptional painting in that it it's an exceptional design and an exceptional use of harmony. It's the, the colors in this are beautiful with that one with the spot of those two boats um, that draws your eye in, but also it draws you in because he's, there's a deck that goes in from the side that brings you over to the boats and it's just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. And the next name is Olina Babek from Heartland, Maine. Olina has done a fabulous job of organizing her shapes. She's the beautiful dark that comes in from the left and draws you right into the flower. Beautiful harmony of color. Uh, that's it. I mean, it's just a beautiful piece of artwork. 
Thank you, Olina. The next name is Sean Carnell from St. Louis, Missouri. Another Missouri. <laughs> In this one, it's this is such a subtly beautiful painting. And I like the way he's organized his shapes. He's got really nicely worked on his clouds. Very believable. It has a nice feeling of distance in it, and it just makes you feel calm. <laughs> so it's just lovely. Thank you, Sean. The next name is Stuart White from Easton, Maryland. And in Stuart's, it's a very, very strong architecture here. He is very good with architecture, I can see. Uh, this is a very strong darks and lights uh, it, it, and uh, shadows and very subtle color, but it really reads well and you really know what that building is. I, If you know what that building is, you really know what that building is, <laughs> so I'm not sure which one it is, but it is uh, really well handled. Thank you, Stuart. Next name is John Cangiano from Rockport, Massachusetts. And in this one, um, the shapes are nicely organized. It's a tra This train has the more subtle color in the beginning and it takes your eye back to that orange train, orange car, I mean, back there. And there's another little kind of a triangular shape in front of that. And I just thought that was so well done, the way your eye comes from the left and it just goes right around to that shape. And, and then the, the road also goes that way where the tracks are. So it just pull, the whole thing pulls you in and uh, beautifully drawn. It's a, a great painting. Thank you, John. The next one is Diane Frossard from Tyler, Texas. And this one also has a, a lovely feeling to it. Um, it. It pulls you back with a road that goes and then turns. And then what happens is that you balance that out with all the, with the water and the sky and the background. So she's figured out how to very nicely organize all those um, masses and uh, a nice color scheme. She's got some very nice um, knife work in this. Um, thank you, I always like that knife work. <laughs> thank you, Diane. Lovely painting. And the last one is D. Palacek. And this one is a very strong one also. It, the truck, the, first of all, I like the the um, way she's used the, the red and green complementary colors in this. The truck, of course, draws your eye, but they're all the way around it. She's got different shades of green. And then there's a little shadow on the wall that really balances. That little bitty shadow does a lot to balance the big shape of red. It's very simple, but it, it really makes you feel that she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Thank you, Dee. Okay, that's it, folks. Good luck. Wow. All we can say is thank you, Sarah, for selecting such an amazing group of artists and for sharing your juror thoughts with all of us. A toast to all the artists who applied and congratulations to our new 2020 competition artists. Tim Newton, who was last year's juror, will be this year's awards judge, and he will have his hands full with these artists, but we know he can handle it. Tim is past CEO and chairman of the board of the Sal McGundy Club in New York City and is currently the publisher of Western Art and Architecture magazine. He is a highly respected art collector, and we look forward to his expertise when he joins us here in San Angelo in October. You know, the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts hosts On Plain Air Texas every year, and this event is a major fundraiser for their children's programs. Howard Taylor, museum director, is here now to say a few words. Howard. Everyone at the Art Museum is very excited about all the wonderful, truly great artists that are going to be coming to San Angelo to observe and paint the uh, great architectural heritage that we have, 
and the exquisite natural beauty of our region. It's wonderful to see more and more of these beautiful paintings in people's homes, our institutions, and our businesses. Uh, also, I think it tells the rest of the world what a really lovely place we live in. And then, besides that, uh, it helps support and underwrite one of the most extensive art uh, education programs in America for children. I particularly want to thank Barbara Rollo and her uh, partner, Treva Boyd, and all the wonderful sponsors and supporters that they bring together to make this, I think, uh, one of the most artist-friendly events in the country uh, and just a wonderful event for our community. So don't forget to buy some art. Uh, we're all looking forward to this. So finally, I'd like to just salute you. Thank you so much. It's water. Thank you, Howard, and thank you, Sarah. What a fantastic group of artists. It's just so exciting. And you know, October's gonna be here before we know it. And I'd quickly like to introduce you to my EPAC gang, the EPAC gang. They are a group of ladies who make this whole thing happen. And uh, they're at home right now with a glass of champagne, toasting our new artists. And I would like to propose a toast to all of our volunteers, to our sponsors, to the museum staff and to that EPAC gang for all you do. A toast now to Treva Boyd, my faithful co-chair, to Ellen Lassiter, volunteer and host home coordinator, to Sharon Alexander, sales team coordinator, to Martha Visney, our starving artist coordinator. And one special person we don't wanna leave out tonight, Blanca Hernandez, on the museum staff has produced this entire video. Cheers to you, Blanca, as well. But back to the artists. Actually, we've kind of been holding our breath all evening, waiting for one particular name. There's one artist, just one, who has applied all seven years and been selected all seven years, each year by a different juror. And I'd like, that's quite an accomplishment. That's quite an accomplishment. And I'd like to flash back a bit and congratulate that artist. Richard Sneary, your San Angelo fans are gonna be so excited to hear this tonight. Congratulations on this amazing accomplishment and we'll see you here for your seventh year this time in October. Now, even though we can't be sure what this fall and COVID-19 will bring for all of us, just want you to know your EPAC gang is creatively making plans to see that the artists who come will have a safe environment and that everyone who wants to visit with the artists, enjoy the finished artwork, will also be able to have a safe and enjoyable experience. We look forward to continued community support and fantastic sales that have thrust on Plein Air Texas to the top. As one of the premier plein air competitions in the country, we are helping make San Angelo a noteworthy national arts destination. Cheers to that. So Trina, I think it's time to say cheers and good night and race back and click that link again and look at all the artists again. What a great evening it's been. Yes, it's been quite an evening, but this is just the beginning. We hope you'll make plans to join us the week of October 17th through the 25th as these artists from 20 states, California to Maine, paint their personal interpretations of San Angelo, Texas and the surrounding areas. They will trace the steps of plein air artists who gathered just south of San Angelo in the 1920s at the Texas Artist Camp near Cristobal. And 90 years later this fall, record their interpretations of West Texas as it is today. Thank you all for joining us tonight to celebrate our new artists. See you in October.